A few months ago, I bought my first large format camera. This is a Graflex Crown Graphic 4x5 camera. I was so excited when I got it because I've always wanted to shoot large format. But after I bought this camera, I realized a couple of things. I don't have 4x5 film, and even if I did have the film, I didn't have any way of developing it at home. The way I saw it, there was two viable options. Either I could go to the store and buy some film and 4x5 reels, or I could use whatever I have laying around and make do with what I got. I did the second thing. I took three strips of film and I loaded them into a 4x5 holder. I did this by cutting a piece of paper down to roughly 4x5 size, then I taped the three strips of film emulsion side up onto the sheet of paper and then loaded them into a holder. In theory this sounded easy enough, but in practice it was a bit of a nightmare. First I had to do this in complete darkness. And what I realized quickly is that making precise 90 degree cuts into film was a lot harder to do in the dark than in the light. Also, while these two outside strips were easy to align, the middle strip was just a total crapshoot which made it really difficult to align perfectly. But that didn't even matter because any of these three strips could just slip out and move when they get loaded into the holder. And that's what happened right here. Another issue I found is that if you look at the overlaid sprocket holes, you'll notice that they drift apart and they don't line up. What I realized after the fact was that the film actually curls and when it's loaded into the holder there's nothing holding the edges of the film strip down. My solution to all of this is using this stuff. This is a thin mylar sheet and unlike the paper backing which sat behind the film, I put this mylar sheet in front of the film so that it would flatten the film out the best it can and it worked out pretty well. Unfortunately, as it solves one issue, it then creates another. This Mylar stuff is a dust and scratch magnet. From very, very far away, it looks fine, but the moment you get even remotely close, yeah, it's not great. The black marks that you see here are from the speck of dust sitting in front of the emulsion before the exposure, and the white marks are from the dust sitting on the film when it was scanned. And you could see all the scuff marks from apparently when I had trouble loading it. Short of having a dust-free clean room slash dark room, it'd be kind of hard to eliminate all of this dust. And it sounds like a lot of work and I honestly don't care. So I just pressed on. The obvious next question I had was what would happen if I trichromed it? The biggest issue was the alignment. All of these strips are at slightly different angles. There's no easy way to get them all perfectly aligned. I mean, I guess I could scan each strip individually and then align them, but that sounds like more work than I want to do right now. So I'm just happy that I got a usable result. On the plus side, the dust becomes less of an issue because there's so much more visual distractions going on. Now, I'd like to talk about how I developed all of this. I did this by taping the strips together from end to end and carefully loading them onto a reel. I think it did an okay job, and only this part of this one strip had any development issues. It also just happens to be right in the middle of the shot, but out of the 15 strips that I shot and developed, only this one had any issues. So you know, I'd say that's a win. Now I could have just stopped this here, but in the back of my mind I was thinking, I wonder if I could do this with 120. I found out that one roll of 120 is just enough to make three sheets, which is perfect because that means I could trichrome it. As I was finishing the second exposure, I slid the dark slide back into the holder, and that's when I heard this awful crunching sound, followed by the dark slide not going in all the way. If this was my last shot, I would have just left it in the camera and then taken it out in the dark, but I was two shots in, I was out in the field, and I had no changing bag. So I had to cut my losses and I pulled the holder out. Yeah, that really sucked. This bottom flappy bit right here was also not locked in, but I was hopeful that maybe the strip inside could have survived. So I pulled it out and I developed it and yeah, it was toasted. I mean, it didn't stop me, so I trichromed it anyway. This has to be the saddest trichrome I've ever done. It had so much potential, but this is what we get instead. But the one silver lining is that adversity is a great motivator and a greater teacher. And what it taught me in this case 
was just buy the film the reel 